the rudder in the ship these two examples or illustrations are are totally neutral they could bring either positive or negative result if you want to steer the horse properly in the proper way it will lead you to the proper place but if you don't do it it will lead to disaster similarly the ship if you can steer it in the proper way it will go in the proper direction and you will reach the destination or if you don't steer it properly you will wreck the ship but the third analogy what james gives here is the potential danger of the tongue he says if you read in verse 5 likewise the tongue is a small part of the body it makes great boast consider consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark the most wonderful and gracious god thank you for this wonderful time as we meditate on your words lord you speak we hear we not only hear to your words lord I help us to follow us set this message deep in our hearts so that we will never deviate from your words lord help us always to follow your commands and let us always glorify your name lord in the name of our lord jesus christ amen amen we have been studying in the book of james and we have already looked into the second chapter the last section wherein we saw faith without good deeds is dead as i have already told you in the previous messages in the books whatever we saw in james the central message in james is real faith produces genuine works the whole book is asking one particular question a penetrating question if you say you believe like you should why do you believe why do you behave like you shouldn't i will repeat it again if you say you behave like you should why do you behave like you shouldn't the same question is now posted in a particular specific direction in chapter 3 of james verses 1 to 12 not many of you should become teachers my fellow believers because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly we all stumble in many ways anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect able to keep their whole body in check when we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us we can turn the whole animal or take ships as an example although they are so large and are driven by strong winds they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go likewise the tongue is a small part of the body but it makes great boasts consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark the tongue also is a fire a world of evil among the parts of the body it corrupts the whole body 
sets the whole course of one's life on fire and it's itself set on fire by hell all kinds of animals birds reptiles and sea, sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind but no human being can tame the tongue it is a restless evil full of deadly poison with the tongue we praise our lord and father and with it we curse human beings who have been in god's likeness out of the same mouth come praise and cursing my brothers and sisters this should not be can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring my brothers and sisters can a fig tree bear olives or a grape vine bear figs neither can a salt spring produce fresh water as i told you in this section of the third chapter james is still pressing on the same message real faith produces genuine works and he is asking the same question in a slightly different way the whole question for the whole book of james as i told you is if you say you be- believe like you should why do you behave like you shouldn't here in this section of the third chapter the question is slightly different if you say you believe like you should why do you say things you shouldn't if you say you believe like you should why do you say things you shouldn't no other section in the bible speaks so clearly with great clarity and impact on the potential destructive power of our words that is how we use our tongues if you look into the english um version in the niv the third chapter starts with the title taming the tongue similarly if you look into the new living translation chapter 3 starts with the title controlling the tongue so it is very clear what james want to say if you look into the very first verse it looks as if james is attacking and condemning people who are teaching because if you see the very first verse a part of the very first verse it says not many of you should become teachers my fellow believers so it is if if you look superficially it will appear that he is attacking or condemning the people who are teaching but when you take a closer look you will realize that he is protecting somebody he begins by saying don't run quickly to the role of teaching don't quickly run to the role of teaching the reason is it's a warning but not he is not condemning it the reason is teachers are those who have the responsibility of speaking god's truth fully this includes me and every other person who is teaching or preaching god's word to other people there is more responsibility for the teachers that is the reason james is warning he is giving a warning why does a teacher receive strict judgment than a learner 
this is a question for this is a question why is james warning us there are three reasons number one is the teacher as i told you he is a responsible person and he is responsible to speak only the truth not his or her personal opinions if i speak the word of god i have to speak the truth and i cannot give my personal opinions the word of god is the truth and there can be no addition or no deletion in those words no personal opinions the second reason is when a teacher speaks the truth that truth is affecting the life of many people who are listening to it and the third reason is when a teacher speaks the truth or teaches the truth that person is expected to live by the truth that is whatever he teaches he should also abide by it it is not he or she who does teach but does it follow it if you look into the second verse he then moves on to say we all stumble in many ways anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect able to keep their whole body in check so this is again especially to the teachers what james is saying is nobody is correct or flawless he includes himself in that one he says everybody stumbles in 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 many ways we all live in a fallen world but when the teacher stumbles when the teacher stumbles they cause the whole crowd of people to stumble along with them so what the message here is the tongue of the teacher is a very very essential tool the tongue of the teacher is a very very essential tool a wicked tongue or an arrogant tongue can be a very very destructive can be a very very destructive weapon if any of you that includes me who is responsible for teaching the truth must not have loose tongue james says we become the objective of god's judgment there will be more that we have to be responsible in answering god when we teach the word so as teachers we should take the warning very seriously so we are to be very careful in what we are teaching and how we are behaving and how we are talking again the emphasis is james is not condemning teaching he urges self control the self control begins not with the tongue but with the heart if you look into matthew 15 18 this is probably the perfect background information what james is referring to from the words of jesus it says but the things that come out of a person's mouth comes from the heart and these defile them jesus in that message he tells that the basic problem is not the heart sorry not the tongue but the heart tongue is just the messenger that carries the word from the heart if you could just imagine a bucket that dips into the well 
and pours out water. That water can be either fresh water or poison. In this context, in Matthew 15, James is warning the Pharisees by saying, blind leading the blind. This suggests that James had this specific teacher teaching of um, Jesus in mind when he was writing this. By looking into this reference word from Matthew, we can understand the root of the problem is the heart, not the tongue. As you, as we go down the verses, we will see how James is developing his thoughts about the tongue. From verses 3 to 5, he gives this simple information. The tongue is very, very small, but extremely powerful. He wants to impress the, this fact in our minds that we don't want to underestimate the effect of this small but powerful tool within us, which can bring both negative and positive effects. To make us understand this, he gives three analogies. It is very clear in the verses, if you look into it. The first one, he says, is the tongue is like a bit in a horse mouse mouth. Sorry. You know a small piece of rope or a metal that is put in the horse can change the entire movement of the horse. That small bit of metal or leather piece in the horse mouth is able to steer the direction of the horse. Similarly, our tongue can steer the direction of our personal life. So we have to be careful how we use our tongue. And the second analogy he gives here is, he says the tongue is like the rudder of a sh ship. No matter how huge the ship is, this ship is steered by the small metal flap on the rear end of the ship. That's the rudder. So that determines the course of the ship. In the same way, our tongue, though it is small, it determines the course of our life. With these two illustrations, the bit in the horse mouth and the rudder in the ship, these two examples or illustrations are, are totally neutral. They could bring either positive or negative result. If you want to steer the horse properly in the proper way, it will lead you to the proper place. But if you don't do it, it will lead to disaster. Similarly, the ship, if you can steer it in the proper way, it will go in the proper direction and you will reach the destination. Or if you don't steer it properly, you will wreck the ship. But the third analogy, what James gives here is the potential danger of the tongue. He says, if you read in verse 5, likewise the tongue is a small part of the body. It makes great boasts. Consider, consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. If we take a small spark or a small smoldering ash, and drop it in the wrong place in the forest, 
it can burn down thousands and thousands of acres of forest it's the same analogy james is saying here the tongue is a tiny spark but it can set blaze the lives of lot of people what he is saying here is the unchecked tongue the way we speak about other people we try to assassinate other persons reputation and character this is not very very uncommon this is very very common nowadays this not only happens in our workplace we have seen this is happening even in churches either by gossiping or backbiting or by slandering so we have to be very careful how we use our tongues our words what we speak can either build unity or it can demolish the way we speak and the words we use can either encourage fellowship or destroy it it can either bring unity or demolition further down in verses 6 to 8 james develops the image of the tongue as a fire he emphasizes that tongue is necessary but it is very very dangerous if you look closely into the verses in uh, words in uh, verse a 6 <clears throat> it says that <clears throat> it says the tongue also is a fire a world of evil among the parts of the body it corrupts the whole body sets the whole course of one's life on fire and is itself set on fire by hell if you look into the, if you break the whole verse into different um, um, portions as phrases he uses these phrases as the tongue it's a world of iniquity that is like crime or evil that tongue it can defile the whole body and again the tongue can set on fire the course of a particular person's life and he compares that to the fire of hell these are actually like if you look closely these terminologies these are really really harsh words james is using he is saying that the full range of crime or evil is being set on one's tongue you should have seen people who are so bitter in their speech some people they always try to talk pride in them they have all pride and parade in their tongue and some people they have more hatred and that hatred just explodes in their tongue this tongue though the small can even change a gentle person into a monster i think like if if i do remember like a week or two before even dr jack mar was talking about this information how people by talking ill words about others try to backbite other people and try to assassinate another person through their words look at the last verse words in the verse of 
and is itself set on fire by hell. James is even connecting the tongue to the hell. When we start blabbering, keep on talking, you know what happens? The garbage that is in our heart is set ablaze. That's the reason we have these verses in Proverbs. In Proverbs 10, 19, it says, Too much talk leads to sin. Be sensible and keep your mouth shut. James is referring the tongue as an untamed beast in verse 7. See, like all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. So we see like almost all the other animals can be tamed. But the wild tongue, they resist taming. This is, this is the truth that we see in verse 8. But no human being can tame the tongue. It's a restless evil full of deadly poison. James is talking about subduing our sinful speech by our own power, which cannot be done. We as human beings, we do not have the power or the ability to keep our tongues in check. But, but, if we know Christ personally, God's power through the Holy Spirit can transform our hearts and take full control of the tongue. If we go to verses 9 and 10, See, like James is relating the tongue to the fire, a wild beast, and even a deadly poison. He comes back to two more illustrations. The first illustration is more like a human experience in verses 9 to 10. And the second illustration is from verses 11 to 12. These two examples, they demonstrate that the tongue is necessary, but that tongue is inconsistent. To go into the first human experience in verses 9 and 10, see, when the tongue we praise our Lord, our God, our Father, and with it we curse human beings, who have been made in God's like, likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, they should not be. As I told you, this is more like a <clears throat> human experience. Imagine that you attend the church service, sing praises, do your meditation, and then you come out of the church. When you start driving, into the road, somebody cuts you in front, how do you respond to that? Do you curse that person? Or do you keep quiet? If you curse that person, if you had done that in the past, stop for a moment and think, what your tongue did inside the church 
and what your tongue did outside the church. If you believe that God hears your praise, your prayer, he is equally there to hear your curse too. So which is the right one to do? The second illustration James is giving here, a spring cannot give both fresh and salt water. A fig tree cannot bear olives or grape wine bear figs. The question here is, if our hearts are filled with grace, should not our lips also overflow with goodness? What James is expecting here is the product should be consistent with the source. We have already seen the issue is with the heart, not with the tongue. If you could recollect the previous chapters we looked into James when he mentions a person who speaks out of both sides of his mouth is a double-minded person. So if we do the same thing with our tongue, he almost says like this is also a double-minded person. A double-minded person cannot reach God, nor his prayer will reach heaven. If you look in Matthew 7, 18, it says, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Looking into all these verses in this section, there is always a forcing question. Where is this inconsistent speech that is coming from? If you are consistently negative, deceitful, bitter, the way we talk, backbiting, gossiping, talking unnecessary things, sitting in a wrong crowd at the wrong time, our tongue always having boastful words, prideful words. This is the time to consider what our tongue is revealing about our hearts. Let's think about it. Let's ponder over it. And if we think like there is something that we need to correct in the way we talk, let us not overlook it. But let us surrender ourselves to the working of our Lord. Let us not resist. I will close this with three applications that we need to do. The tongue, it defies in the sense the way we talk, it contaminates us, it contaminates other people. It contaminates our life and other people's lives too. So the way we talk, it degrades ourselves among other people. The second one is the tongue, it defies, it resists, 
that's what i told you like whenever we are forced to talk certain things stop and think whether those are the words that really have to come out of the mouth is this the word that i have to put into or this the statement or the sentence that i need to talk if i do talk in that way is that going to glorify god so we need to think over it and if god is trying to correct those let us not resist that change we need to yield to god's work and the third thing is the tongue always displays or exhibits what we are the way we talk the words we use it exhibits the inner person that is hiding behind a very nice object people can dress properly post themselves so beautifully but the way that particular person talks displays the true character of a particular person good words or bad words that come out of our mouth the fruit of our lips find this source the root of our soul so let us not resist god's work to change ourselves if we have issues in the way we talk let us not have any self control but let us surrender ourselves to the hands of god and commit ourselves so that god will change the way we talk how we talk in that way we will always try to glorify the god i will end with this verse from ephesians 4:29 it says do not let any wholesome talk come out of your mouths but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen thank you lord for this wonderful message thank you for steering us in the proper way you have given every other organ in our body with a purpose and each organ they perform in different ways lord but in whole them we always want to use that to glorify your name to always praise your name in that way we will be always be salt and light wherever we go lord let us always be the image of your son Jesus Christ into which we were made lord you chose us not we lord it is your faithfulness you had in us you have transformed us you have redeemed us let us not fall into the dark habits let us not go into the darkness lord 
help us always to enter through the narrow gates so we will know more about the truths and you will reveal more to truths to us lord help us always to use ourselves in the way that it is always pleasing to you lord let none of our character or conversation defile you or contaminate you lord because you have wiped away our sins wipe us now and you have justified us and called us and you have chosen us lord you have brought us for a price we do not want to defile that lord speak into our hearts send this message deep into our hearts so that that we will never deviate from it help us to impart this knowledge to our children to every other person whom we try to meet and let them also glorify your name lord thank you for being with us throughout this message the name of our lord jesus christ amen amen, amen.